morning, everyone. We'll call our work session to order. Um, we are being held virtually uh, via WebEx of November 10th, 2020. And the topic of our work session is organizing curbside residential solid waste, which is trash recycling and organics collection. So I will pass it on to City Manager Rodriguez to open us up. Thank you, Mayor Reagan Gonzalez. Um, I uh, I don't have a lot more than um, Rachel and Amy are going to take you through it, and we've had some work sessions on this um, before, and so I will ask Amy to take it over. Director Marco. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Council. Um, and for those watching or listening, I'm Amy Markle, the Recreation Services Director, and then with us tonight presenting is Rachel Lindholm. She's our Sustainability Specialist. And I'm also happy to introduce Peter Santai. He is a principal planner with the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency, and he works a lot with the solid waste management and sustainable materials management. So if we find ourselves having questions, um, we can also ask Peter as well tonight. So I'm gonna ask uh, Sustainability Specialist Lindholm to, to share our presentation and in starting to think about organized collection for the city of Richfield, we're gonna be talking tonight why it really makes sense for the community right now um, and how the, the process would um, play out and the timeline associated with it, including um, engagement and education efforts. And it's nice to know that with organized collection, the adopted plans that our council has in place which include the 2040 Comprehensive Plan and the Climate Action Plan, um, both support this work. When you look at some of the specific goals, like the one noted there, um, goal five of the Climate Action Plan, which is to reduce waste that's generated, um, it specifically outlines uh, to organize curbside solid waste recycling organics collection by 2022, and to increase accessibility and equity and achieve environmental benefits. Uh, so organized collection is, is greatly supported by the Climate Action Plan, and both plans uh, really encourage you know, equity for all residents, affordability for the residents in the community, sustainable lifestyle, and also an increase of quality life of life, which or organized collection would help um, promote and encourage. And so in looking at the why, the purpose for organized collection, uh, the first big reasoning are the, is economic. And when you organize collection, you improve the value of services, you increase equity, you decrease the economic burden on marginalized populations. And that could be communities where English is a second language, uh, senior communities, low or fixed income, we would improve our standardization of services across the whole city, and we would ensure all residents have proper waste management services. Um, so when the city can uh, create a contract with haulers, we can coordinate the services, which um, would look really the same across the board. Um, and right now everyone has vastly different services. So we would have the, the same level of service, increased efficiency, but for residents, it would also result in lower costs. And we would not see the huge variation we see amongst the cost of services right now. And looking at invoices that we uh, received from our organics task force members, the people in the same city with the same hauler getting the same services, we had one member who was paying $20 a month for garbage and recycling, another member at the same hauler same service paying 40 and another part of the city. So there's a huge discrepancy in what people are paying for the same services. Um, but when we're able to help uh, do the negotiation for everybody, I think we will see a decrease in cost um, and just overall higher quality services for, for residents. Another huge reason why uh, organized collection makes sense for Richfield are all the environmental benefits. Uh, it will reduce the environmental impacts of pollution, 
from increase of trucks, the litter blowing around. It also will in decrease the amount of air and noise pollution. Uh, it will improve safety for community members as we'll have decrease of trucks on the road. And for the trucks that are on the road, you know, one hauler will have one area of the city. And so we'll have increased stops. So trucks will be traveling at a lower speed. It will also reduce road wear and impacts with less trucks on the road. And one of the biggest reasons um, I believe this is so important is we will see a decrease in the amount of illegal dumping in city parks. Um, you know, in working with the park ambassador program this summer, uh, it is not uncommon to see people use city uh, park waste containers as their weekly, you know, place where they put their household trash. Um, we saw just about everything this summer as far as computers in parks, chairs, uh, we found a mattress, lots of different items that, you know, that were just dumped into parks. So hopefully when everybody has the same um, level of services that are affordable and equitable, we will see that type of behavior decrease. Um, another reason why uh, organized hauling really makes sense right now are some of the social and education benefits that would come out of it. Um, it would help minimize disruption to residents um, and increase quality of life. We would see increased rates of recycling, composting, and waste reduction. It's interesting to note that we are in the bottom four cities for the rate of recycling in Hennepin County. So we're number 39 of 42. Um, so there's lots of room for improvement. And it's also interesting to note 42 out of 44 cities um, in Hennepin County have single sort recycling that's organized. And there is definitely some correlation when you have you know, organized recycling and hopefully organics efforts, you would see an increase in participation and a, an overall decrease of waste generated that's going into landfills. Um, it also overall would help enhance coordination among government agencies. So it would help us work with our partners from the state, such as MPCA, Hennepin County, and also help us reach our own goals that are outlined in the Climate Action Plan. Uh, it will improve hauler reporting system in working closer with our haulers, um, every year we are mandated to uh, report out the overall tonnage of, of waste that's removed from the city, recycling and organics. So it would help um, with the reporting effort. It would also help us uh, increase public education and awareness, having the, the same system really in place across the whole city. We can streamline education efforts um, throughout the city and also just kind of optimize staff and holler administration efficiencies as well. Just knowing everybody has the same system in place. In addition to these reasons, I wanted to point out that um, a lot of these uh, benefits and reasons why um, have been uh, identified by staff, but just as many have been identified by residents and brought to staff and council members at various points, you know, throughout the past few years, um, specifically regarding safety, I've had a resident tell me that uh, she won't let her kids play um, outside in the street or, you know, even probably in their front yard on Thursday mornings until, um, you know, she knows that all the trucks have gone by and there are so many trucks. So this has really been a priority for a lot of uh, residents for different reasons. Those who want curbside organics collection um, as it's more convenient than drop off organics and things like that. So I did want to emphasize that this has been a, a collaboration of identifying the reasons why, um, you know, staff has looked at why organized collection would benefit the city and as well as why residents um, would like to see organized collection. So there have been a few, we've uh, done a few work sessions on organized collection and presented, um, you know, our findings, uh, the staff has presented findings and, and brought in experts as well. Um, and a recent industry development um, 
is that it was announced uh, a little bit ago that um, one of the haulers that's licensed in the city of Richfield is um, in process to uh, be acquired by another hauler licensed in the city of Richfield. So um, Republic is um, in process to acquire Randy's uh, by the end of the year. Um, this will affect the uh, organizing process as it does decrease the number of haulers involved. Um, so this is just an important update uh, for um, uh, residents and council members to be aware of as we go through this process. So the organized collection process has a, a lot of steps to it outlined by the state statute. And I think as we've talked about the reasons why, um, you know, going forward and looking at what does this statute entail, um, you know, where, what are staff responsibilities, where, where's the council involved, how are residents involved, how can we make sure everyone's on the same page, um, as you know, we learn all of this information um, and really go through this process together. So I did want to note uh, a few key points in this process, and hopefully that will kind of um, clear, excuse me, clarify how how the state statute um, needs to be followed. So there will be a legal notice um, published this Thursday in the Sun Current um, that uh, you know indicates that the city is pursuing, um, you know, the option of organizing collection. Um, and that lines up with individual notice that will be sent to licensed collectors in the city. Um, so legal notice will be shared both ways. And that kind of, that starts uh, the process of considering organizing collection. Um, and then there are a few things that can happen simultaneously and are, and are a little flexible, but the, the biggest thing is that there will be an initial meeting with callers, uh, which will happen uh, towards the end of November. Um, and that's when elected officials and staff meet with licensed collectors in the city to lay out uh, council priorities and desires and what uh, council members have heard from residents. And it's just kind of, it's a meet and confirm meeting with the haulers to start the process. It's not an official negotiation meeting. Those will happen after. Um, and so as we go throughout the winter, that that entails uh, negotiations alongside public engagement. So we are planning um, a lot of, of public engagement through various forms to really reach out to the entire Richfield uh, community that, you know, will be serviced or could be serviced by organized collection. It's, it's obviously not an entire city, but it's usually um, residential units or residential buildings with one to four units is is typically um, who that uh, encompasses. And so to really reach out to the community um, and understand, uh, you know, their their priorities, um, their their thoughts, their uh, their concerns, their feedback, um, and share the information that we've learned throughout this process as well to make sure that everyone's on the same page. There's also um, the second bullet point that says formation of the options committee, which is a potential route um, for the for the organized collection process, depending on uh, how negotiations uh, go. It's it's a committee that does further research on ways to organize collection. So that um, will be decided uh, later on in the process, um, but it doesn't affect the regular public engagement that will be going on. So public engagement, uh, all, the, all, all of these pictures are from in-person uh, public engagement and obviously all of our public engagement for this effort is going to be virtual. I did want to point that out. Um, we are planning several, what we're calling learning and listening sessions, um, which will be virtual um, presentation, open house, Q and A kind of things for um, staff and residents to interact and ask each other questions and, um, you know, hopefully answer those questions um, and have that community forum. Um, we've also created a web page that will be actually published tonight that will host a variety of resources, including an FAQ, Frequently Asked Questions page, um, and uh, a whole list of the benefits to organizing collection. Um, and we hope that that will answer a lot of questions that residents might have. In addition to the, those questions uh, being answered online, we do have um, you know, staff who are available to answer those questions. I'm 
personally really excited to talk to residents who have thoughts that they want to share about organized collection or are unsure how a part of the process might work. And so in all of our um, materials, my contact information is listed. Um, and then our regular uh, outreach through social media posts and videos. I have already done throughout the past few years, regular recycling education and organics education and then waste reduction education. So that'll all continue um, and having social media posts about the learning and listening sessions and the benefits to organizing collection and, and those things will kind of help round out our public engagement. And this is a, an area that we will keep developing over time. If we need to have more learning and listening sessions or um, have another suggestion from uh, residents on what they'd like to see in public engagement, um, that feedback's always welcome as well. So then to continue the process it, next year, again, this is very tentative. Uh, we don't know how long certain steps might take. Um, so there's a lot of question marks. There's a lot of uh, February slash March. There's, you know, it's just really subject to how long various steps of the process take. So um, obviously our public uh, engagement and education will be ongoing throughout the whole process. That doesn't stop uh, at any point throughout. Um, and then, in addition, as negotiations continue and public education and ed engagement continues, if a contract, a draft contract uh, proposal is brought to city council by staff um, or recommended to city council by staff, then there are other steps um, that will be um, like a public hearing will be held. Um, and the city council will um, consider the draft contract and you know so make change or make changes or suggestions. Um, again, this point of the process depends on how long negotiations last. It's hard to pin down an exact uh, even exact month that it might happen. Um, but depending on uh, when a contract uh, with the haulers could be approved and how long those uh, licensed haulers would need to implement the contract in the city. Um, we could be looking at a summer or fall implementation schedule, uh, which is ideally the, the ideal time to implement uh, a new kind of collection system. Obviously you wanna avoid a, a winter <laughs> contract. So this falls in line with um, the goal of getting curbside organics collection by January 1st of 2022. Um, to fulfill the Hennepin County mandate. So that is the tentative process. And I think um, we can now yep, open it up for any questions or um, feedback from council members. Thank you to staff for that great presentation. Any questions or comments from council members on what Member Whalen. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, first, I I know we've had this conversation before, but I still am fully in support of the the effort. I think all of the reasons given are, are accurate. A um, few clarifying things. Um, the I know there's um, like lots of engagement and education opportunities in terms of like if residents want to provide input as the process goes on, um, what avenues are there for that? And is, um, I know you mentioned the options committee. Um, could you maybe just say a bit more about that? Would that be something that some residents would be part of or um, is that more like staff council and haulers? Um, I, I just, I know there's a few residents I've talked to who like want to be part of the process. Thank you, Council Member Whalen. Um, so to answer the first question about uh, feedback separate from the engagement and edu education aspect, um, I think we'll, we'll definitely be working on a, a variety of ways for residents to submit that feedback that's not necessarily at those learning sessions. Um, I hope that that's having the staff availability. I hope that 
you know, having my contact information out there and, and putting it on these posts and, and in our releases and things like that. And when we do, um, you know, any material, like sending any uh, mailers or anything like that, I hope the more I can get my contact information out, the more that residents are sharing that information or their feedback with me. Um, as it relates to the options committee, it's, if we, um, get to that point in the process, I would say that we are, we have considered and would like to have residents on the options committee. The options committee is just, um, it's a little up in the air as to if a city starts it at 1 point in the process, they start it, um, you know, and the reasons why they're starting it. So, um. If we get to that point, then yes, residents would we would greatly appreciate if they were involved. Um, they uh, the members of the committee are appointed, so that would be a, a future conversation, um, for sure. Um, but again, if you have any ideas, or if or if the residents who have already talked to you have any ideas on how they would like to submit that feedback to me, um, I'm all ears. City Manager Rodriguez. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Mayor and Council, we have talked about this a bit, and there's there's not a lot, there's not a roadmap for this because there haven't been that many communities that have done it. Um, but we have a strong tradition in Richfield of making decisions with residents, and so the conversations that we have had is that we would have residents on the options committee and involve them early in the process, so they're learning along with us as we do the negotiations. Council member Troutman. Thank you, mayor and, um, and thanks to staff um, and, um, and Amy or uh, director Markle. And, uh, Rachel specifically um, quick question just about the options committee. And did I understand is there just 1 package of benefits that every resident will get. Uh, or services, or will there be some. Uh, some kind of a menu or optionality on an individual home basis. So, to clarify the, the options committee doesn't have anything to do with services uh, in, in what you're referencing council member Troutman. So, with the, with the services you're referencing, like uh, a residence. Uh, garbage recycling and uh, eventually organics collection as well. Um, that's that's separate. So let me tackle the services part first. Um, it, it's not that every resident in the city of Richfield would be obligated to have the same uh, garbage can size, recycling can size, you know, um, uh, optional services would still exist, like yard waste collection, bulky item pickup, things like that, that are uh, very much, you know, if a resident wants it, they can, and if they don't, they, you know, it's not obligated. The cart size uh, choice is still there. Um, other specifics that we get into would have to be uh, decided through negotiations, um, including uh, possibilities like having every other week trash collection for those who are uh, producing way less with um, having organics collection or looking at pricing for having every week recycling versus every other week recycling, things like that. So there's flexibility. Some of those details just would have to be figured out through negotiations, um, but not every resident would be subject to have garbage, recycling, organics, yard waste, uh, mandatory bulky items. It's, it's not that uh, intense. And then the options committee is a separate um, entity that focuses on um, other aspects of the organizing process. So it's it's in tandem at times with negotiations, but it focuses on alternatives if if necessary. Yeah. I kind of look at the options committee like a, an, another tool that we have to for a group to get together and coalesce and, and think through some options they can bring towards the, the people doing the negotiations to look at um, other ways to do it. Thank you. Um, I'm very excited that this process is moving forward. I think it's been a long time coming and I think it's going to be good for the community. Um, I had one 
process question. When you were talking about that initial meeting that's coming up in the next few weeks, is that with the entire council or a couple of representatives? How's that going forward? And then as far as the, um, the feedback and the community engagement, are we going to be having the sustainability commission or the community service commission members help us reaching out to residents and helping in that process? So for, let me, I'll go backwards. Uh, yes to the, the commission aspect with education, outreach and engagement. Um, we have been talking to the sustainability commission about this um, and can definitely uh, loop in other commissions as needed. Um, but the sustainability commission is aware and actually their meeting this month will be all about uh, learning this whole process uh, in addition to, um, you know, what we've talked about in the past. And so, um, they will be kind of the commission, the default commission, I'd say, for, for education and outreach with this effort. Um, and then in reference to that initial uh, meet and confer meeting with the licensed collectors, that's what you're referring to, right, council members? Okay. Uh, that's actually a conversation that we've had over the past few days. Um, and details are still in progress, um, but we will be connecting with council members um, to... Uh, see if the tentative date and time that staff has identified uh, will work for uh, all council members or a majority. Um, but I think, yes, we will try to coordinate with as many council members as possible um, to really have, you know, as many uh, at the meeting with the licensed collectors to share um, priorities and perspectives. And I think that would uh, lend uh, to a balanced discussion. So I hope I answered all of your questions. Yes, thank you. Yep. Other questions or comments from council members? Council member with, and then council member Trauman. Um, I had a question for, I, I know uh, engaging with residents and figuring out what options we have can be challenging. Well, challenging normally, even more so with, with COVID. Um, but knowing as, as several different residents are, um, are good about reminding us, knowing that not everyone does have internet. Um, are there, I mean, have we thought about like, even just like a simple postcard mailing to residents who would be impacted by this? Um, and maybe it's even just that with some bullet points. And then, I mean, the link to the FAQ page, if they have internet or your phone number to reach out. Um, and I, I don't know, that there is much of a more interactive option than that, short of like trying to call every resident, which is not really feasible. Um, but have we have we thought about non virtual engagement and education options? Yeah, thank you, Councilmember Whalen. Um, Rachel and I have already started talking about uh, a mail or a postcard, something that would go out to everyone, so we we make sure we reach as many people as possible. And then we just lined up a contract today too with um, a, a lady that we've worked with before to offer translation services during the engagement meeting. So we should be able to translate everything in, in Spanish as well. Great, go ahead. Uh, just to slightly elaborate on, on what Director Merkel was saying, um, we figured out a way in or a function of WebEx to provide live closed captioning. So it'll hopefully be the best of all worlds where we can have um, uh, captioning and translation um, for those who might uh, need or want it. Um, and then also when it comes to a Q and A portion of uh, this open house, um, there'll be an opportunity for the translator to um, verbally translate um, any questions to me. Um, so we're kind of hitting all of those bases on the learning sessions. Obviously, yes, they are, since we, everything is so virtual, it's, it's unfortunately, it's dependent on internet, but um, the mailer will go out and we will continue to try and think of, um, you know, different ways to kind of reach uh, communities that might not have uh, reliable uh, internet access or might not be available at, at the times that these sessions are happening, you know, whether that's recording, um, the sessions and posting them online, um, if they can access the internet from another location later. Um, the WebEx meetings are um, accessible via uh, phone as well. So that could be an option um, 
we'll just we'll have to see and then kind of play some of this by ear but we are doing the best we can in the virtual landscape we find ourselves in council member Troutman, did you have a comment or question i i did it was almost word for word what uh council member council member whalen asked so so thanks to council member whalen um same same page same question um so i think it was it was basically answered um and my only my only other just you know highlighting it is with is maybe just the the folks that are probably going to have the hardest time to connect via internet are probably going to be the people that are going to be taken the most by surprise by this and might might find it the most challenging to transition to to a new um a new system for for trash collection specifically older folks especially older folks that are not on the internet or people that that may struggle with different disabilities so i'm glad you guys are thinking about that um but that was that was same same question good good question council member Whalen. thanks council member and rachel i do want to add um thanks council member Chairman. that reminded me uh just as an anecdote of how we can reach out to um, various communities, especially um, those who might not have a, uh, internet. Um, I heard recently from a few uh, residents who were trying to connect with their hauler about yard waste pickup, and a few of the residents who called me didn't have internet access, but they heard from their neighbors what was happening on, on sites like Nextdoor or um, you know, I'm sure the, the community page or things like that. So we have these, uh, these communication channels are already set up. I think it's just going to be how how can we be intentional about reaching these communities, um, you know, where they're at, and and how having neighbors share this information uh, with each other and things like that. So we do have this uh, great organic communication in Richfield, and and hopefully we can take the take advantage of that. Thank you, Council Member Schapel. Um, and this is just a uh, brainstorm suggestion. Um, as we were talking, I thought about the high school kids because I know there are a number of kids at the high school that are really into sustainability and into um, uh, climate action plans and that kind of stuff. And I'm hoping we can tap into some of their thoughts as well. It's a great suggestion, Council Member Supple. Thank you for bringing that up. You're right. Our students are so passionate about this issue of sustainability. Um, I realize I haven't added anything yet, so I just want to say I've said in the past, I think um, this is the right direction to go in. We've been building to go in this direction um, in several different ways, looking at organics in our city, looking at the abysmal rates of recycling that we have in Richfield and um, really focusing on sustainability and equity and um, staff has done a great job of outlining why this um, organizing really rolls up into meeting those goals and values of the council and, and as the, of the city overall. Um, just what and I know we've talked about outreach, but I think given COVID, we might not know exactly how things will play out, period, with anything. That's, you know, just being responsive as best as, as we can. And, you know, I think we've been doing a great job in being nimble as we see gaps and barriers because of COVID. And so just take applying that same approach with this. There might be things that come up um, that are really particular to the situation we are facing with COVID. And I know that staff has done such a great job in the past of, of filling those gaps, of being creative, but this is just another one of those areas where it's such an important thing to our whole community. And because of COVID, there's going to be additional challenges or ways that we might need to do things. So just asking everyone to kind of put their feelers out there. We're all in the community in different ways. And if we do see kind of barriers come up, um, making sure that we're being responsive and adapting as needed, because who knows um, what that will look like with this process. But I'm, I'm sure things will come up that we maybe haven't planned for. Any other comments or questions, Director Merkel? Yeah, I was just gonna say we could easily work with um, Neil in probably getting information up on the community access channel. Uh, you know, so if people don't have internet, that's another outlet. Um, we may be even able to pre-record um, part of our learning session 
and try to post that periodically throughout this this winter people great and other questions or comments council member troutman and then Waylon, and then oh and then peter did you raise your hand as well great we'd love to hear from you so uh the two council members and then we'll go to peter Thank you, Mayor. And um, it, great, great idea with regards to um, to to engaging our, our schools and our school uh, system. And I was just reminded that on occasion we we've used um, kids backpacks as a method of communication to communicate to families. Um, and and so that could be another uh, another another channel um, to uh, to communicate with families and, and even over communicate this because. People I know will experience this, you know, as a as a difference and a change. And so I just I want to say thank you again, and I'm really excited for this. And um, and uh, and that's it. Thanks, guys. Um, I had a just a quick question, or I think as much a reminder. I think I know the answer to this, but I know when we first started this conversation uh, more publicly, one of the first concerns we heard from residents that I think is still valid and just want to make sure it, that it's planned to be part of negotiations um, is the actual like transition and um, especially like making sure that whoever um, I know there's many directions that this could go based on negotiations whether it's one hauler for the whole city or different haulers take different portions but um, just want to confirm that the the actual logistics of like changing over billing, getting old bins picked up, new ones delivered, all of that, that we, um, it's our plan for that to be as uh, seamless as possible for residents and hopefully without any um, additional fees or things from their, their current contracted hauler. Sorry about that, Rachel. Just in uh, response to Councilmember Whalen's comment, um, I agree. Thank you for bringing that up again. And it, it has been a very important thing that we've focused on throughout this whole process. Um, you know, that's part of that whole minimi minimize disruption to residents on that slide. It's not just uh, safety and reducing the number of trucks, but it's really as we go throughout this process, making it as easy as possible. Um, and making sure that we can follow some best best practices that have happened in other uh, situations where residents weren't charged um, for, you know, cart switching. Um, and, you know, there was overlap between when they had when they got their new cart and then when their old service stopped so that they were never without a cart, you know, things like that. So thank you for bringing that up and we will make sure it's prioritized for sure. Thank you. I think Peter had um, to share some comments as well. Yeah, Mayor, members of the council. Uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me to participate in this workshop. Um, as a member of the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency, we do appreciate being involved. And uh, we very much value the environmental benefits that can be achieved through organized collection. So I wanna let you all know that that's recognized by us. Um, so thank you, I guess, is kind of the first piece. A um, couple of things I just wanted to share as observations that I've noticed with other communities. Um, you will have a loud vocal minority um, that opposes this. So I just want you to be aware of that. And so I think it's great all of the discussion that you're having around community engagement, because the more the city gets out and communicates with the residents, the better off you'll be. In terms of in terms of that loud vocal minority, because the haulers will communicate with your community. Um, if they haven't started that already, they may have already. Um, and then um, the other thing that I urge council to consider as you go forward is a dynamic that the number of haulers you have and keeping small haulers is an inverse relationship to the cost to the residents. So that's that's a difficult thing that you're gonna have to weigh and something that you're gonna need to decide what your priority is because the lowest cost to the resident will be one hauler. 
Um, but there's a lot of value in making sure that your small independent haulers remain in business as well. That's just going to increase the cost of the residents. So that's a dynamic that I like decision makers to be aware of as they proceed. So that's what I have for you today. Thank you so much for attending the meeting and for um, bringing that up. That that information is very valuable because you have seen so many communities go through this process. So any um, observations or information that can help us make it a smoother process would, is greatly appreciated. Um, I know Rachel wanted to respond as well. Yeah, no, more so just add on. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Um, I did want to, to point out that, um, you know, we are uh, privileged to have a, a few haulers of different sizes in Richfield, um, and that will make the, the negotiations process of which, you know, the statute requirements obviously re require a negotiation with the consortium first um, as the first attempt. But the haulers that we have in Richfield and the ones that we work with, um, you know, I think this is going to be a very beneficial process uh, to residents in both obtaining a, a more equitable and lower price for residents and keeping all haulers in the city, um, you know, that have their current market share. Um, so really balancing both the residential price and the and the hauler uh, presence. And I hope that that's something that we can continue to work through um, through negotiations to really to maintain both as best as possible and and keep getting those benefits for everybody. So thanks, Peter, for your, your additions. Oh, Peter and Council Member Trotman. Hi, one more thing I wanted to mention. Uh, Rachel in her presentation mentioned the acquisition of Randy's sanitation. Um, it'll be interesting to me, just as an aside, um, how that affects your process because Randy's has been one of the most vocal opponents to organized collection and um, Republic Services has tended to kind of just allow it to happen, um, confident in their ability to negotiate a decent deal with the community. Um, so with Randy's being purchased, it may, it may, <laughs> I wanna emphasize that may um, result in a smoother process for you, uh, depending on who the other haulers are in the community. Council member Chapman, did you have something to add? No. I, I did. I'm so, I'm sorry, the my connection is kind of fading in and out here a little bit. Thank thank you, Mayor. Um I just wanted to say I know this is a difficult issue, kind of balancing um smaller haulers versus cost. And so I'm I'm still learning about this, but I just wanted to share my thinking about this. Um and I really am more concerned about cost than making sure every smaller hauler still has the contract. It's just one of the benefits. I, I I love small businesses. I'm passionate about small businesses, but there's an opportunity to scale and there's an opportunity to get a better, more efficient result. And so whether that's one hauler or two haulers, um, I think that's a good consideration, but I'm just I'm just putting it out there in just one one voice, but I I would not make making everything the same the a a, a particular goal as far as I'm concerned. I, I don't have a strong feeling about that, but I just wanted to share that as staff has some flexibility as they're, they're negotiating. Thank you, Council Member Troutman. I'll just add to that too. Um, I think in my, in my role and in our role on the council, our number one interest is, is the impact on our residents, right? Short-term and long-term. And so I'm always, um, thinking about uh about that first and foremost is the impact across the whole community obviously there's always there's always uh you know more direct impacts on decisions for certain groups and you take that into account and at the end of the day you balance that with the impact on the whole city because we are you know we're accountable to to work with our residents to do what's best for the whole community of richfield um, Great. Other, oh, Rachel. Thank you, Mayor. I did just want to point out, um, I, I don't know if this is uh, as uh, public. I work with this fact all the time. I don't know if this is super public knowledge. In the city of Ridgefield, regarding residential haulers, we currently have five licensed. However, with um, market share and with the acquisition of Randy's uh, by Republic, we would essentially 
be negotiating after the acquisition is final with three haulers. So that does kind of bring, um, you know, the the bring in a new element into the mix in terms of, you know, getting prices. And, um, you know, it's it's a very different situation than a lot of other cities have dealt with um, in terms of the number of haulers, which can have a lot of uh, different um, variables. Um, so it could make the process shorter. It could, you know, we just don't know how that will play out, but I do think it's important to note it, to know that we do have a very small number of haulers that we will potentially be negotiating with. And, and that is beneficial. Thank you. Council member Whalen. Um, if I'm understanding the, the state mandated process correctly, um, at least initially, it's not, it's not an option to have a single hauler that we negotiate first with the group. Yes. Okay. I'm seeing Rachel nodding. So, um, I think we'll, we'll see how negotiations go, but I think that that question of, um, fewer or all three, uh, versus price, I think. Yeah, I mean, well, I don't think that question becomes relevant unless the. Negotiations with the consortium are become we can't reach an agreement um, as my understanding. Rachel. Uh, just to to clarify on on council member Whalen's point that he is correct. That we do have to um, enter negotiations with a consortium of licensed collectors that are uh, available and willing to negotiate. Um, there are a, variety of clauses for why uh, a hauler might choose to not be to not participate. But um, that is uh, the first step. We will be negotiating with the licensed haulers who choose to participate in in um, negotiations. And, and that's where when we look at the haulers we have in Richfield and their capabilities to provide service to the city and uh, our interactions with them in the past and how they've uh, negotiated in other cities and things like that. That's what um, makes the process. Um, more exciting for for staff because we have seen all of these benefits to the haulers that are licensed in the city. Are there comments or questions from folks? No, Peter. Yeah, Mayor, Council members, thank you. Uh, with three haulers, the cost um, question gets a little bit easier too. Uh, you know, a city like St. Paul had, I want to say 17 when they started their process. So obviously that made things super complex and difficult. Uh, Bloomington had seven, I think. Um, and then um, the other community that did it recently was uh, Falcon Heights and they had three haulers and it went fairly smoothly. So um, it does it does start to simplify things when you don't have a huge number that you're working with. Thank you. Rachel. Last thing, I promise. Thank you, Mayor. I did want to point out in, in Peter's list as well, uh, St. Anthony Village also had three haulers um, and it went fairly smoothly for them as well. Um, and their haulers overlapped quite a bit with Richfield, so. Great, helpful information. Other comments or questions on the item? Nope, all right, well, thank you so much. Peter for joining us. Thank you to the staff for a great um, presentation and thorough information on the issue um, and to council members for asking quite a bit of questions um, and just sharing what we've been hearing out in the community. Um, so we look forward. This item is on our agenda for the council meeting tonight um, and I will adjourn our meeting and I'll see the council members and staff in under a half hour. Thank you. Have a great night. Thank you.